In the previous video, we generated random numbers and used them to switch two cells on our board. Next, let's create a method that will check if we now have a magic square. After each switch of two cells, we need to check if our numbers now form a magic square. The method will return a boolean true if we have a magic square and false if we don't. Alright, so here's my method. And now we know that the sum of values for each row and column as well as diagonally needs to have the same value. So as a test value, we can take the sum of the values of the first row and check if all the other rows and columns and diagonally produce the same result when added together. So here I have my variable and I'm simply adding together the numbers or the values from the first three cells of our first row. So basically I'm adding one, two and three. That will of course give me the number of six and then I will check if the second row, if I add these numbers together is six and the third row and as well as the columns and diagonally. And obviously it's not, but that's how we will be checking if we have a magic square. So now we can see if everything else adds up to the same value that is now stored in the temp sum integer. So first let's check the other two rows. Now we could simply add each row and column the same way we did this row. We can simply create another addition just like this. But we're programmers so we automate everything as much as we can, right? So therefore we will perform the addition inside a loop. A simple for loop that loops through each row and adds the numbers together. There are three rows so we will only have to iterate three times. So here's my for loop and you can see that I start i equals 1 because we already have the first row which is the index 0 so we can skip that and just check the other two. So we are checking to see if the sum of the other two rows equals the sum of the first row, which is the temp sum integer value. So we can do a simple if statement, but instead of checking if the number equal the temp sum, we can check if the number is not equal. Because if they do not equal, there's no point in checking anything else. At that point we can simply return false because we do not have the magic square. So here's my if statement and I'm simply adding the numbers of each row. Now remember how two dimensional array indexes work. Our columns are the same for each row. We only change the row indexes and these indexes are represented by the value of i. But these indexes that are hard coded, they represent the column and they don't change for neither of the rows. So in the first iteration of the loop, we will have cells with the indexes one zero which is number 4, 1, 1, which is 5, and 1, 2, which is 6. And the second iteration will have the indexes 2, 0, 2, 1, and 2, 2, which is the number 9. Alright, so we check the rows, and if all three rows have the same sum of values, then we can check the columns. But if they don't, we'll simply return false, and we don't have to bother with the columns at all. So, we're going to loop through all three columns, and add values of each columns and check if the sum does equal the temp sum integer, just like we did for the rows. So I'm going to copy paste everything. And in the case of the columns, we start from index 0, not 1, because we need to check all three columns. The temp sum integer only stores the sum of the first row, not the column. And we need to switch the indexes. Now the indexes of each row will be the same and i needs to represent the changing indexes for the columns. So we will switch them around. It's going to be 0 and i, and then 1 and i, and then 2 and i. So in the first iteration, we will have index 0, 0, then 1, 0, which is the next row but still the same column, and then 2, 0, which is the third row and still the same column, which is the column of with index 0. Then in the next iteration we'll go back to the first row, which is the index 0, and the column is 1. Then index 1 for the row, and index 1 for the column, and index 2 for the row, and index 1 for the column. And finally, of course, 
0, 2, 1, 2, and 2, 2. Okay, so if our rows have the same sum and the columns have the same sum, now we can check the diagonals. And there's only two diagonals, and although we could use a loop, it would be quite hard to read. It's simply easier and makes for more readable code if you just perform the calculations on each diagonal manually. And we could do a simple if statement and see if the sum of the diagonal equals the temp sum integer, just like we kind of did here. But I'll show you a little different approach. We know that so far no false was returned. So if we come down here, we know that we passed the test for the rows and test for the columns. So now all we have to pass is the check for the diagonals. If the diagonals check and they have the same value as the temp sum, then we can return true from that. And that means that the rows, columns, and diagonals match and we returning the true because we did not return false in any of the previous two if statements. So like I said, we can simply return true or false directly after we perform the addition and check if it equals temp sum. So we can use a return statement and now we can add the diagonal cells together similar to how we added the cells for the first row altogether. So now this adds all the numbers for the first diagonal together. Now we can simply check if it equals temp sum. What this does, instead of returning an integer, which would be the value of the addition, we are returning true or false whether this calculation equals temp sum. If it does, we'll return true because we have now diagonal that matches the temp sum. If it doesn't, we'll return false because it doesn't match. But we have two diagonal additions that we need to perform. So after we check the first one, we'll simply add the second one, just like you would in an if statement. So I'll add the add, and now I will check the second diagonal. So this is the addition of the second diagonals with the proper indexes, and I'll check if that equals temp sum. So what this means is that if the first diagonal equals temp sum and the second diagonal equals temp sum, then we'll return true. If any of these is false, then we'll return false. So that would mean that we did have the same number for the temp sum in our rows and columns, but we failed the diagonals, so we still don't have the magic square yet. All right, so our is magic square will return true or false after each switch between the two cells. And now we also need a method that will actually display the board. Now I'm going to display the board only at the end, once the magic square was found, just to see which case out of the eight the program actually found or managed to do. I'm not going to display the board after each switch between the cells, that would be just too much. So here's my method that will display the board. And displaying the board from two-dimensional array is easy. We'll simply have a nested loop and we will display each cell on the game board. Remember, the board cells are in a numbers array, so that's what we will be displaying. So here's my outer loop that loops through the rows, and my inner loop that loops through the columns, and then within this loop, I'll simply display the cell that we are currently looping through. So we're using the numbers array with the indexes i and c, and I'm adding a space just so the numbers are not crammed together. But after each row, I want to move to the next line so I can start displaying the next row. All right, so now we can put it all together. So in the main method, I'm going to create a counter that will count how many cell switches the program had to perform to create the magic square. And I'll initialize it to zero. And we can do everything in a simple do while loop as our main loop. So here we will be looping until we reach the magic square. Remember, we check if we have a magic square in our method is magic square. So as long as the method returns false, we will try again and again. So we will loop while not is magic square, or while magic square returns false. And inside the do loop, 
we need to increase the counter with each iteration because each iteration means we performed a cell switch. So we need to perform another after that because we are still inside the do loop, meaning the is magic square method still did not return true. So we'll simply do counter plus plus. And now we can, although we don't really have to, but I will anyway, uh, we can now display the counter on the screen. It may take a while before the program creates a magic square and displays it on the screen. And until then, all we would do is uh, stare at the blank screen. So by displaying each counter, we will have a visual confirmation that our program is running. And now it's time to call the switch cells method. Again, this method will randomly switch two cells. And once the cells are switched, the loop goes into the while statement which of course contains a call to is magic square method, which checks if after the latest switch that we just did, we have a magic square. If we don't, we go back to the do loop, but if we do, we can now display the magic square board. So I'll simply call the display board method after our do loop finishes. Once our do loop finishes, we know we have a magic square because the loop does not finish until that happens. So once we have a magic square, we can display it using the display board method. And that's it. I guess one last touch is to display how many tries it took to reach the magic square and then display the counter, which holds the number of tries that the program did or the number of switches between two cells that the program did until it finally reached the magic square. All right, so let's try it. And we got our solution here. And you can see that it took 129,850 tries. And this is our magic square here. 834, which indeed is 15. Uh, 159, that's 15. 672, that's 15. And so are the diagonals. So we have 834, 159. Let's see which one it is. So we have this one. 834, 159, 672. So that's our first magic square we reached. Well, let's run it again. This time it took less, only 27,210 times, and we have 492, 357, and 816. So let's see which one that is. And it's this one, the third one in the first row. So, so far so good. Let's give it one more last try. And we got 98,604 times that it uh, took and 276-951-438 276-951-438 that's the last one so you can see that it's working and uh, this is our low shoe magic square solution i hope it was helpful and that you picked up a few tricks and that you now better understand how to manipulate indexes of a two-dimensional array so thanks for watching